Eric glided down to just over the worst of the trash, and he slashed it with his sword. The paper and trash broke apart. Eric slashed again, and small shreds spun into the air, fading to nothingness as they did so. Eric held his sword and issued some mental commands. Nothing visual happened at first, but Eric's eyes refocused onto empty space and moved side to side as if reading from menus and texts that only he could see. After a few moments he found what he was looking for, and pointing his sword, a tea set appeared on the park bench. The scent of heavy hot tea and fresh baked cakes filled the park. Eric landed, his arms held ready, and glanced from side to side. I don't have time for anything fancier. Hope this is enough. Just as Eric was getting ready to drop his wings and leave, he was startled by an unexpected voice coming from the hallway, still visible through the garden trellis. Eric, what are you doing? There, holding a box full of flyers and forms, stood an old friend of Eric's. The newcomer, who had floppy ears and a canine muzzle, was wearing a military-style uniform and was looking surprised finding Eric in his wings out form. Eric waved hello to his friend and displayed no embarrassment at being caught wearing nothing but feathers. It's okay, Lance. There's no chance any residents will see me. What are you doing here? Lance stepped into the garden and shuffled his shoulders to indicate the heavy box he was carrying. Mabel, from building, told me you were here. I was wondering if I could stow some junk in. While Lance was talking, Eric gave the mental command to cause his wings to fade away, and his normal uniform to reform around himself. He called this process dropping his wings, and neither Lance nor he thought there was anything odd about the whole process. As Eric's eyes settled on the box of papers, his wrinkled his brow and started to get angry, realizing why Lance was searching for him. Forget it! No way! You guys in League already took my first meeting room, Eric said with gusto. Lance seemed to take Eric's outburst in stride, and for the most part ignored it. He started walking around the garden trellis, walking towards a patch of trees. Lance reassured Eric. No big deal. I can hide it here behind these trees. Eric was outraged and tried to stop Lance, calling out to the legal department Bodorg. Wait, the field is mostly a loo. Uh, forget it. Ignoring Eric's warning, Lance had tried to walk behind the bordered path of the garden and had gone face first into an invisible wall. With a loud thump, he lost his balance and fell backwards. The contents of his box were dumped all over the park. Papers and forms drifted through the air like some bureaucratic winter dream. Lying momentarily stunned, Lance looked up at Eric, standing over him, and mused, You could have warned me sooner. Eric suppressed a smile. He was annoyed and wanted to be angry at Lance, and knew if he let himself laugh it would wreck the grudge he was nursing. What did you expect? This is just an old break room. Even a designer wouldn't have been able to sneak in an entire mini-universe in here. The park is just a cheap illusion. What's going on illegal that got you so frazzled? Lance took his time getting up on his knees as he answered. The vultures are circling. The press got wind that a high-profile case is going south. Eric knew Lance well enough to realize the dog was just dying for Eric to ask a follow-up question. Then Lance would wax on for an hour about all the problems in legal and all the frustrations he always had about his desk job there. Eric didn't have time to waste on that now. He shrugged his shoulders and said, I don't think I want to hear any more. Just clean up. I need to get back to the heckle bombs. Lance looked around at the mess and started grumbling as he picked up the first messy handful of papers. Fine. I'll find some other place to stow this junk. Eric was already out of the garden, and Lance followed a few moments later. Neither noticed that behind the teapot that Eric had summoned, a box of papers labeled jury forms had landed right side up, as if neatly placed there. Around the same time as this was going on, Ellen was still crying her heart out, unable to explain why, not to herself, and certainly not to Jolan. Jolan 
having just awoken from an endless nightmare into total confusion, found herself trying to confront a strange woman in a situation that left her at a complete loss to explain what was happening. Ellen knew this was not right. She tried to shake off her own emotions and regain some composure. She thought to herself, Stop it! Jolene, meanwhile, said what she felt. I don't understand, dear, but I'm sure it'll be all right. Ellen forced herself to stand up again and shuffled back to her own chair. No, this is all wrong. I should be comforting you. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Hecklebaum. The teddy bear faced woman shook her head. Jolene, please. Ellen smiled and regained more of her composure. Thank you, Jolene. I need to explain so much, and I've wasted so much of our time already. Ellen coughed to organize her thoughts, then started over. Oh, well, let me start. I'm sure, Jolene, that sometime during your life you wondered about if there was an afterlife. Well, being here, it's now obvious that there is. But it's probably different than whatever you might have been expecting. Some of what you may have been taught about the afterlife might have been in inspired, but even the best guesses got the details wrong or at least distorted. She paused for a moment to let that sink in. Jolene did not look upset with this news. Ellen sighed with some relief. Many people took the news that whatever religious teaching they had grown up with was not absolutely and divinely perfect well, went badly. She continued, For example, there is no hell. Jolene replied, No hell? Well, I don't think I ever really believed in... Ellen continued before Jolene could finish. No hell, but neither is there a heaven. If you have any comments, good or bad, please send them to our email address at one moment after at gmail dot com. And you can reach the web page at cosmofur dot hop two dot org. Thank you until next time. Goodbye.